This is the Lotus Reiki Healer, and we are back with another video. Um, today we have a video, and the reading's topic is, what is the karmic lesson here? So not everyone's message is going to be the same because not everybody's reading is going to be the same. And I'm super excited for everyone to be able to gain the um, life lesson, the spiritual life lesson of this uh, specific situation, whatever that might be for you. So um, we're going to start from this side to this side. This is going to be pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Take a moment to see which pile or excuse me, what crystal is calling out to you and I will meet you at your pile. Okay, pile one, if this is the crystal that you chose and this is your reading. All right. Yes, so let's just get into it. For this pile, I'm viewing a video of mine. I want to welcome you to the Lotus Reiki Healer experience. Um, I am Lotus, your host, and I am super happy to have you here. So just so that we can be acquainted in the event, okay, and in the event that you are a regular here, you know that my readings are catered to more of an empowerment vibe, more of an, a pursuit of empowerment, personal um, self-mastery and things of that nature. So... I rarely ever speak about love, even though um, sometimes it does come up and I read the cards how they come up. However, I'm always um, going to encourage self, like I said, empowerment, self-empowerment, as well as self-mastery and uh, evolvement and discoveries of different perspectives that we necessarily wouldn't think of from our egoic um, standpoints. Um, anyway, I say all of that to say that when you are watching videos or readings on my channel and videos, because it's not only going to be readings, you are going to have this uh, sense, get this sense of empowerment, this sense of, um, a urgent, of me urging you or encouraging you to become your better self and to see things from a higher perspective and things of that nature anyway if you chose pile number three which was represented by the rose quartz type of pendant um then this is your reading and the question that we are going to be answering with the tarot cards and the oracle the tarot and the oracle cards today is what is the karmic lesson in this situation. So, um, and then we have some advice, which is going to be represented with the Oracle cards. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so let's move forward. All right, so here is what I'm seeing. Um, I am seeing a situation where there is a journey here um, that I believe that you're being given the resources as well as the green light and the energetic alignment to move forward with an idea, with something that you have logically, you know, had clarity about. And it is something that you have long-term goals. Like you see this uh, on a huge level, on a big scale, and I feel like there's a lot of planning here, um, as well as clarity where it where it goes where it comes to this. The karmic lesson. Let's see. I see this is something that overfills you with love, and um, fills overfills your heart like with joy and emotional, you know, fulfillment for sure. And then we get to the two of swords here, which makes me feel like with the leading card being um, a queen of swords, I feel that. The person here, represented here, is hmm, maybe stuck between two options, but I do feel that, um, you know, just maybe during this, hmm, I feel like there are some hesitations to make certain movements, to take certain 
ideas and move towards fulfilling them. I feel like there is certain hesitations. Maybe you overthink. Right. Because again, we have swords here, but we also have we have a little bit of everything. But I feel that the swords here is representing, OK, and everything that is water, passion or wand and uh, tangible, uh, the pinnacle, uh, all these things are positive cards. The only thought energy we have here is some type of uh, discontentment, some type of um, stagnancy some type of confusion, maybe stuckness, resistance is what I'm feeling. And with the chariot card in the reverse, which speaks about leadership roles, right? It speaks about charging forward towards something that you're emotionally passionate about, which we see here. And the uh, king of, Pen of cups in reverse here shows that there is some type of distortion between you moving forward with a passionate new beginning, a fresh start maybe in both love and uh material and we kind of heard this um situation in one of the piles so maybe you were attracted to another pile that touched on something similar but i do feel that overall the issue is that you're not being your real self maybe this is a connection situation because i'm drawn to the male in the back um maybe this is a um you know, maybe with yourself, but I am seeing two people here in this card. So I feel like there is some urging of you to maybe this with this official person. Hmm. I could read this in two different ways. So what I'm going to say, one, is that this is telling you to not overthink things in or to overcome what this um, confusion or stagnancy is because there is an official potential for you to have a happy start in terms of love and um, finances. I'm also feeling like... Um, Maybe two people in a situation are not being honest. And what does that mean for you? Um, I do feel like after some res re some let go of resistance. Okay, so maybe in your... Uh, okay, and then this is the second one. So maybe in your situation, um, you are more logical and maybe egoic. Let's talk about that. The... Queen of Swords, of course, in the reverse can be very egoic and very cold and, you know, um, too logical, like just very cutthroat. Um, can I get a clarification of the two of uh, swords? I'm going to put these back. Yes, thank you. Yes, okay, and the lovers on the bottom. Okay, so we're definitely talking about love. Like I said, I don't talk about love on this channel, Queen of the Cups, on the other side of the deck so the lovers here yes okay so i feel that and this is just crazy because like i said i don't talk about love and um things have been like coming up personally about that so who knows what the emperor is okay so i just feel like there is a harshness now let's just cut the shit let's just get to the point there is this harshness that i feel that you come up cross as and i don't think that you're the only person with that because this could also be whatever Anyway, so I feel like there is a harshness that you have about yourself and a very cutthroat energy that you have about yourself. This feels like a feminine energy or this could be a masculine energy who's not in his feminine energy. Um, but this isn't, you know, gender specific. Whoever chose this pile chose it for a reason. You know, um, I do feel that there is a potential for either you to become in wholeness with your divine, your divine energies. Uh, masculine and uh, feminine uh this could be je definitely you but i do feel that moral of the story is there is a blockage here in moving forward but that is because <sighs> i mean it's definitely affecting the relationships okay like let's just say that it's definitely affecting relationships i don't talk about love often like i said if it comes up i read it um right you know so there's some changes maybe there's a different approach in the way that this connection is kind of formulating um and maybe it's a change from when however you've ever hi dealt pile with. three thank you for, or excuse me hi pile two you might have been um attracted to pile three as well um 
<laughs> I love when I do that because then I go back and choose a pile and that's the pile that I chose. But, um, and I'm like, I was attracted to that pile too. Anyway, let's talk about your uh, reading today. And the question is, what is the karmic lesson here? So um, let's get into it, girlfriend or boyfriend. So when these cards first came out and I was wondering while I was setting this up, like what the heck was it that I had first uh, heard when these came out, these cards, you know, because this came out, but then I was like, okay, blah, 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 let's move forward. So the, <laughs> the message that I heard when these two came out was let sleeping dogs die. Yes, so this is what I'm getting from this pile. Um, what I'm getting, and then we have some advice cards here, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, um, and I'll just put this right here, and we'll get to that when we get to it. So, yes, yeah, so let dying dogs, let sleeping dogs die, let sli dying dogs die, let you know, resting dogs sleep something. And um, I feel like, let me get some more. right okay yes i think that that oh wow okay so i'm gonna move this so that we can touch base so this these cards have been helping me get the general theme of this i feel that there is an attachment style do you see how the um queen of pinnacles is holding on to the uh pinnacle it's in this case with the devil here i feel that this is someone who's very uh hands on or very um, it's giving me a very Four of Pentacles vibe. So this Queen of Pentacles is giving me the Four of Pentacles vibe. And for one, I'll say this, that's very early in the journey as it pertains to Pentacles. So the reason why you might have been attracted to the Pile 3 is because that that Pile spoke to unexpected income and how the gates and the a receptivity energy between that person in the universe is blocked um and i feel that the four of pentacles is very early on in the pentacles and with this queen this is a queen this is someone who has been um training for this for lifetimes with this uh world card this queen has learned all of these lessons very developed whether you're a male or a female and this person is very um I heard studious, I guess, in life as a whole, you continue to learn. And that's why you're so fruitful. That's why things multiply with this bunny around. There's, uh, there, things are, flour are, are able to flourish around you because you never stop learning. You never stop going after what it is that you want. Uh, whatever your sacred path is, has aligned you with that. I feel that what you, what your lesson is, is that you hold on to things to an excess. You bind yourself or you want to find yourself maybe to certain things because you're afraid to let them go. Like you have a, a, a fear of releasing things, maybe even to the universe. And this is putting a block in your finances. But if you were interested in the uh, last pile, but now let's just talk about this pile. So I feel like this puts a, a, a block specifically in, uh, as it pertains to romance, possibly, and or just the flow Let's talk about just the, uh, you know, with this uh, Knight of Cups, you see there's a river in the background or a stream, but it's in the reverse. And with this cup being in the reverse, everything that is supposed to be in there falls out of it. So I feel like this is a queen who is beautiful and uh, very smart, very stable in her own right. But there is a habit of uh, feeling so engaged with something, so connected with something that you bind yourself to it energetically and you don't give it opportunity to flow and come into its flourishing um, or to play out. I feel like um, with this, this is a justice card and with the world here, I feel like this ends up being a karmic situation for you over and over. So I don't know if you're receiving the messages that are coming from those situations because of you holding on so tight to the potential of what it could be, what it could have been, right? And this gives me very romance, very uh, masculine energy. In fact, I also feel that you're in a place where you are mature, you are, you know, looking for something stable, but the people or the contenders that come around to you are not able to contend with you. They don't match up. So, and that speaks to 
why the four of pentacles is so early you're so early in your path you're so early in your journey and you're considering staying here in one place versus allowing yourself the grace it is for your journey from the four of pentacles to the ten of pentacles to actually come into fruition damn Damn, you're not supposed to meet anybody at four pinnacle, uh, four, four pinnacles. You're not supposed to be experiencing anything that is stable, if you will. Now, I'm not saying that to be all because the poverty is in the um, um, reverse. So I also feel like karmically you've worked out energies that had to do with your finances. So maybe you're not so much like pile three as far as maybe their finances isn't always right this feels like energetically your finances are supposed to be right that your situation monetarily is in the upright um for sure however if you are not experiencing the the flourishing in the bountiful uh supply that you're supposed to or you feel that you're in alignment with because you are it's because you're not allowing things to flow enough in your situation i feel like karmically you are continuing to pursue things that are dead lessons or people or uh behaviors or ideas that you were supposed to grow out of so you know i mean and not even supposed to because you're not late for anything you're right where you're supposed to be so the lesson here is for you to allow things release things open up your mind your heart the four of pentacles is guarding his heart this person is pretty much in their lap so maybe even their uh base chakra so i would even recommend that you do some base chakra um meditations yoga and real work when it comes to your groundedness and how much you feel like you belong where you are um and then we're talking about the heart chakra so doing some healing um yeah, so doing some healing when it comes to your heart chakra your uh, and your base chakra because you are feeling bound to things when you're supposed to be flying. You're, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be soaring and really enjoying these early stages of your life, I feel. And um, maybe because certain things haven't worked out in the past and are not supposed to. I'm very much so getting they're not supposed to work out in the areas of where you are in life because you're a queen and that's great maybe there's some more um so we'll find out what your advice is and we'll definitely get there but there are some connections that you have experienced that you might feel like you're ready to multiply and be of this whole creating procreating energy but you are ultimately shooting yourself in the foot because you're not supposed to be settled in this mode you're not supposed to be settled and or uh, secure, if you will, um, in this stage of your life. You have six more steps to go if we're going based on the four of pentacles. But those are lessons and those are maybe even things that you can do research on. What does the five of pentacles look like? What is the, um, and maybe not explore that too much, but the six of pentacles, the seven of pentacles and really conquer those steps and those lessons that those um energies carry that way you could be able to match up and intersect with your king of pentacles you know and whatever that looks like if that's the masculine energy within you then perfect if that's a masculine energy with you know outside of you um then that's well too but you don't want to be stuck or stagnant and or attached to anything in this stage because it's not that time let's get some more advice for you <laughs> nice i love when it works out so the blue tiger's eye message says it is easy for me to see beyond the obvious i am focused on my my own sacred path calm mental chatter and clear confusion take steps to gain a new perspective on life increase emotional balance again um and then let's read this trust your path if you knew you would be supported what would you do star mother how can you mother yourself break the chain ancestral backgrounds healing rewriting the future so i feel that in previous settings and or in your mind's eye and your understanding of your journey right now it has been that uh the sooner you get stable or whatever you know other people complete you or whatever whatever attachment style you have been privy to you have experienced and witnessed as your um as a child 
because we're talking about mothering ourselves. As a child, you experience certain attachment styles or the lack thereof, and it has put you in a place where you need to learn from it. You need to re parent yourself and i think that we came into a great perspective just now is that you know if you're so early in the stages of life and or development that you should give yourself that time that space as well as the universe that trust we're talking about receptivity and things like that giving your the universe and your spirit guides and yourself that trust that you it's all gonna add up you're gonna get exactly what you want so i feel that Whatever it is that you would tell your child, whatever it is that you would have wanted someone to tell you if you were feel if you witnessed someone feeling this way, um, you should nurture yourself, right? We have two nurturing uh energy cards here. So I feel like you should really put that energy into yourself. You should really um focus on your own development, your own sacred uh path, and really just allow the universe as well as yourself to the grace of allowing those things to take place the grace and the patience and the time for each step in each stage that you're on because you're on a journey and i'm seeing that um you are breaking the chain ancestral patterns you have the opportunity to rewrite the future in the ways that your descendants will approach situations and or to rewrite yourself in this karmic life cycle so that you don't have to learn this again in another life cycle so that your children don't have to learn it again in another life cycle and so that your soul can be at peace when it transitions wherever it's moving forward to you know whether you're going to go on to another journey uh in this lifetime uh and experience the benefits of having conquered this which is most likely the case but also at the end of the day when everything is said and done and you're no longer you're not going to have to come back and experience the same things that you've experienced in the event that you believe in reincarnation and souls that uh, reincarnate and have to work through karmic lessons because that's what karmic lessons are about. Um, anyway, I do hope that this helped. Um, it was my pleasure. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Find me on Instagram at the Lotus Reiki Healer. Check out my Etsy shop. Um, request a reading if you're not, if you're interested or if it's absolutely necessary because I love it. Um, see you in the next one. All right. Bye. Okay. So this is for pile three. Um, when I was pulling out the cards just now to lay them down, I just heard in my head, it's over. And I say that to say, um, I heard it in a way where it said, and I hate to say it this way, but this is the way I heard it. It's, it feels like whatever it is that you've been through, with this night nine of wands it's over the guardedness the you know maybe being overly analytical about the situation overly fearful you know and maybe even still laying down um so to speak with the uh ten of swords here um it feels like it's a new day here and I feel like there is um, some energies here that's saying to let go of the things that took place in the past with the pathway um, card here. It does. It feels like it was a rite of passage. I feel like you're right on time with the changes that are being made or called energetically for you to make. I feel that this is a person, whoever picked this pile, that is very analytical about the situation and with this scene with me seeing this it says I, my body and mind are in balance i am healthy i feel that this person is over analytical to the point where it's affecting the health of their connections we have the family room a uh, mature woman with people around you this um is affecting the relationships that you have with people because i think that you might be on guard yeah yeah we're here we're on the same page you guys so I feel like this, whoever chose this Paul is very guarded and very um, cynical and very someone who thinks, get them before they get me, sees the situation as a situation that's doomed to fail or to go bad at some point. Um, and uh, this is affecting the reciprocity as well as the giving and the connections that you have. This can just be even the connections you have with the universe the connection you have with yourself. I do feel that you are a very smart person and you are a very um, energy-based type of person. I feel like you might read, like you might read energies, I feel like. Um, 
and things like that like i feel like you're spiritually in tune but what's holding you back karmically is that you are experiencing things from a perspective of let me get them before they get me oh they're out to get me and it's putting you in a very guarded state um what else right this is what i feel that i feel that it's blocking because this is like a block. It feels like there's a gate, a guard of blockage to things down here. Maybe to the next step of your path. Maybe to your family home life. Definitely to your finances. And maybe to your highest potential self if you consider yourself a female. As well as if you're a male, then to connections with women. Maybe even to your feminine energy that you have within yourself right because the moon is also feminine but it also talks about fears it also talks about intuition and things like that so i also feel like before we even get to the advice that you should use more of your intuition and in how you feel emotional with the water and things like that um versus using your logic and you're you've already accomplished that any smarts or intelligence that you are supposed to display is already set everyone knows that you've got it all figured out you know you've reached you know, all of those, um, those journeys that the king has experienced from the ace of, not this, but from the time where it was the ace of swords, this king has been through all of those stages, right? And I feel like with the 10 of swords here, with that being said, you've gone from all of these different things. We know you've seen it all. We know you've done it all. I see that. However, now those things are now putting you the way that you're receiving it or you're projecting it out it is that you've been there you've done it and if anybody tries to cross you you're ready you're guarded you're you are already seeing or feeling this is how your perspective is is that you're already prepared for someone to cross you you're already prepared to experience some type of fears or some types of you know negative situation based off of the fears that you've already been through so let's talk about the advice so my mind body my mind and body are in balance i am healthy release inflammation release anger and resentment heal old mental and emotional wounds improve inner peace balance mind body and emotions i'm gonna have these up right All right, so let's talk about the advice here. So the advice that I'm seeing for you, pile three, is that um, trust the niggle. What is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? I feel like that speaks to your intuition that the niggle is what's real. When you intuitively get that nudge or that feeling that you can't really shake, that things are not in alignment with you, or alignment with your truth, alignment with your path, alignment with what it is you want overall, what it is that your higher self uh, aligns with, then this is accepting change that leads to you becoming more aligned. I also feel like there are certain transitions and pathways that you can expect on your path, but that doesn't mean that you have to come at it from a position of guardedness and uh, defensiveness and things like that there is a need to be more aligned with change and accepting of um, upcoming change. I'm really um, drawn to this crystal because it's very sparkly. So I just feel that everything that you're doing in life is leading you to the path where you will shine, where you will be able to embrace and live in your truth and be, um, you know, grounded. You know, the stone is the earth. Uh, material um share your voice come out of the cave uh persecution expression so i feel that yeah that could have been a part of what's what made you fearful that you know a part of whatever resentment maybe speaking your truth in the past broke some relationships up maybe certain people couldn't handle it but they were not a part of your path path they didn't align and anytime that you set a boundary or you put yourself in a position where you are wanting more out of a situation and out of a, a connection or whatever that is, 
you should be able to speak your truth. You should feel able to embrace yourself. And I feel like that's emotional intelligence. So we're talking about heal old mental and emotional wounds. These things are not, you're not asking for too much. You're sometimes asking the wrong person. So I feel that that's necessary. And share your voice because again, I do feel like whoever chose this pile is going to shine, is meant to shine. The ever unfolding rose cracked open is happening for you, not to you. So again, everything that has happened up to this point, there's some more sparkles here, has been so that you can reach your highest path, so that you can be one with your divine masculine energy, your divine feminine energy. That way you can experience the fullness of what life is once you have learned all of the lessons but it wasn't to put you in a place where you were insignificant or um meaningless none of the lessons that you've learned have been meaningless these all are going to come to a culmination of what it is that you're supposed to be doing what it is that your uh life path is so that is the reading. I do hope that you were able to find some value in this reading pile three. Um, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, and like this video. Find me on Instagram at the Lotus Reiki Healer in order to um, keep up with anything that I have going on, as well as to, um, you know, search and find my products because I, saw, I sell a lot of divinity uh, tools and things like that. Um, that you can use to shine as well as to uh, help you on your spiritual journey. Um, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Pile number four. This is your reading. Okay. You know what? This was in the reverse when it came out. Yep, these were both out. All right. So I'm going to leave that right there. And let's get these out. This is the advice. I just let the chips fall where they may when um, the cards are coming out, so. All right. So. Right. So this is what I'm taking. I feel like um, for this pile, there is a hard time of accepting change in the situation. I feel like there is a there is a habit that you have that puts you in a situation where you are in hermit mode towards your community, specifically when things may not go the way that you expect them to go. I feel like you have a lot of concerns um, that are eternal when it comes to the life lessons that you're supposed to be learning in this lifetime. Yeah, so there is a, um, I feel that you are very privileged and or you um, are, let's say, maybe you even are expecting people to cater to you. Maybe you are expecting that um, whatever the expectations are with the Knight of Pentacles here, something tangible, something um, grounded, something, you know, of material. I feel that you are a very privileged woman and or male, however you identify. But I feel that when you um, experience certain concerns, when things don't go the way that you expect them to go, I feel that you have this way of shutting down um, to your community. And I don't, I feel like the issue is that you're 
not as great of a communicator as you may think you are. I think um, this affects this affects the health of the relationships that you have in your community, and I feel like you know that. I feel like you may be someone who isolates themselves and or is comfortable in your solitude. And I feel that it's because when you are um, alone, you don't have much confusion. You have the opportunity to um, be um, clear with your own thoughts and your own um, feelings about things. But the moment that someone else gets into the um, the mix or in the ordeal, I do. I feel that you have a preconceived notion even that things are not going to go well. I do. And I feel like uh, with that being said, you move slow in things. You may not uh, be as open to or, or receptive. And that is a message for you to receive because the universe is a very receptive um in giving universe god or however you um identify that and when we are closed off in one way we are energetically holding or yeah holding out or holding space from what is available when we are able to open those doors and receive things inwardly and outwardly, right? I'm seeing gift and home. And I'm also being brought to the fact that this is being given, that it's like being handed. So to be honest, what I am receiving um, is that there are gifts, there are celebrations, there is community around you. So if you do feel alone, that's not the truth. That's absolutely not the case. I feel that um, you may feel alone because the root understanding is that, hmm, what's the lesson? How can I, what, for one, that things are definitely um, not worth stressing about. Um, I definitely think that your approach to things are necessarily um and the way you handle things. So let me just say this. If that resonated with you, how what I just said, let's, then let's talk about your um, advice portion of the reading. So the um, advice that I got for you as the Crystal Intention Oracle is um, concerned. It says, I accept the impermanence of all things. I know that change brings renewal and goodness. Integrate and accept change, align with the cycles of life, improve mental clear or alertness, focus on present moment. So I do feel like with that being said, you are more so living in the future in your and in the past um, in your mind. This is a karmic understanding for you to get to work through because it is affecting, like I said, your community, your network of people. So the feelings of maybe regret I heard as well as the feelings of um, stagnation that you might be feeling is because in this area of your life, you're not receptive, you're closed off. And that is preventing the stream of gifts for you to receive as well as to give. So you may see, like I mentioned that your relationships are not going so well, you may under or experience uh, job, ex, you know, job communities, co-workers, and uh, just otherwise, you might receive, feel that that's not, um, like, you know, you may not get along with the people that you work with. Um, maybe even yourself, I feel that with this person's hair being white, as the original um, writer waits, hair is white as well. But I feel like you might be stressing yourself or adding unnecessarily uh, bad health to your situation and your community by not being receptive. And it's just important to talk about because if you know these things and you can work through these things and then you can start receiving better communications, better dealings with people and better feelings of overall inner peace. And that's why, you know, that just ties into the karmic behind it. If you're not sure of what um, karmic means, it just means that your uh, universal energy, the energies that have traveled with you from lifetimes onto now, so um, let's talk about more of your advice. The warrior woman, how 
or excuse me, have you answered your deepest calling? Starseed, what lights you up? Um, yes, just say yes. Soul, family, calling your tribe. You don't have to do it alone. Exactly. So I feel like whatever your deepest calling is, it is community-based. I feel like that's why you're experiencing this in this lifetime is because it is something for you to work out. The yes feels like yes. Now that you're here, now that you have this understanding, you would be able to make those changes that would then improve what this calling is. Whatever it is that lights you up is the answer to what that calling is if you don't know what that is. Your soul family, uh, calling your tribe, uh, you don't have to do it alone. I feel that you have spirits and energies um, as well as your highest self that you can be calling on in order to get through these um, potential hangups as well as you are and may be able to connect with your on earth soul family here better once you overcome whatever these hesitations are, these fears are, you know, um, yeah, I heard fears of ab abandonment and different things like that. So um, I hope this helps pile four. And if you want a personal reason reading, please contact me on Etsy um, or on Instagram, the Lotus Reiki Healer. I would be more than happy to assist you with that. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye.